What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. Um, grab your vices, chill out, and let's get straight to it. Um, this is episode 18 of Straightforward with Miss B, along with my guest co-host, A.G. What's up, A.G.? Hey, Miss B. <laughs> oh, my God, you done changed <laughs> your voice up. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded like uh what's the man name from back in the day Pee Wee Herman <laughs> you know put the put the Pee Wee Herman voice on man what's going on man I tell you it's been a woo, excuse me been a long long week um happy Mother's Day everybody um yeah, this is the first pause since Mother's Day, so I want to wish hopefully everybody out there um, had a wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day, um, spending time with their, you know, grandmas and their aunties and their sisters and their mamas um, celebrating this great day. I myself, um, I had a good time. We took, you know, went out to dinner um, on Mother's Day. And just kind of chill with the family, so that was um that was pretty good uh, for me. Outside of that, I really have, um, I don't really have much else going on. Um, you you know me, I'm always trying to trying to work for the most part. So, um, how was your for week, the man? Love of money. Gotta make long, that money, man. Long, long, long. My birthday week. Oh yeah, Plus I celebrated. My birthday. Mm-hmm. Had a day party. You had a day party? Yeah. Okay. Well, you had a day yeah. party at the house? At my office. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, might yeah, as well. Right on, right on the block, baby, in my office. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It turned out pretty good, too. Oh, okay. All right. Did you have, yeah. like, drinks and stuff in the office and stuff, food? Oh, yeah, we was outside. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah we barbecued ribs, mm-hmm. chicken, fish, um, Patron, Jose, mm-hmm. Hennessy, mm-hmm. you know, little stuff like that. Oh, okay. Corners. Right. Yeah. Right. And I'm being an all-nighter. All-nighter. Outside all in nighter. the parking lot. In front of the outside in the park, in front of the tax business. Music, (laughs) (laughs) y'all folks in Birmingham. It's funny to be, man. (laughs) I got an office right in the middle of the hood, baby. Everybody just was fitting in that day, right? (laughs) Right. Well, I mean, that was kind of a little, you, you could say that it was a uh, little opportunity to kind of give back to the community, too, right. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> Dang, was you ain't let people come get no barbecue and stuff. Oh, no, it wasn't for them. Oh my god! I, I do that earlier in the year. It's, that's that's a January thing now. Oh my just, gosh! No, nah, we can't have none of that. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Dang. Had the game on and everything. We watched the game. Mm-hmm. Bought the TV outside. Yeah, we had a nice time. Everybody showed up. Grandma, mama. Oh, okay. All my friends and family. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. I feel you, man. But yeah. yeah say um, RIP to my, my mom, husband. Hardest glove with a real big papa. We, we lost him earlier the day before my birthday. Oh, wow. So, Dang. Rest in peace. And condolences yeah. to you and your to you and your family, man. Okay, yeah, I appreciate it. But um, other than that, man, then I cooked a full course dinner for Mother's Day, of course. So mm-hmm. that was my first time just cooking everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Did it turn out good? good? Oh, everybody loved it. Okay, we had that love. What did you cook? I cooked macaroni and cheese dressing, green beans, cabbage. Um, potato salad, candy yams, mm-hmm. roast, mm-hmm. and meatloaf. Oh, wow. What do y'all have for dessert? Um, uh, she went and bought a pie. And then, uh, a little, little key lime pie. Oh, I love key lime pie. 
Oh yeah, I guess everybody love it too. <laughs> I love it. Love key lime pie. And then this is place here called um, Cafe Intermezzo. I don't know. I it's been a while since I've been there, but they have a key lime cheesecake. Oh my god, it's so good. It's so good. Well, I'm glad that you did that. I don't know. It's been long. It's been years since I cooked like a a full meal <laughs> for. I'm saying like for a holiday for the family. That's just my mom is usually the one that cooks, so I just kind of leave it up to her. But. Yeah, mama said she wasn't cooking nothing, so I know we still had to eat. Mm-hmm. So right. I was kind of forced into it. It wasn't what I wanted to do, but yeah, yeah. Considering what was going on, but that was that was nice of you to do that. Speaking of, um, speaking of, you know, women and specifically black women and how strong and beautiful and diverse and versatile and educated and and intelligent and bossy and and, (laughs) you know and and financially stable and great and you know and all these wonderful things you are that i am okay (laughs) the one guy well it's it's a couple of them but i will say the most recognizable popular guy um, from YouTube, who was, you know, I would say in the last two to three years have have made so many just kind of qu- very questionable, um, uh, not so, you know, not so cute statements against black women and women, well, I would just say women of color in general, Done down, passed away. That dang on Kevin Samuels. You heard about that man? Oh yeah. Mm 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 mm. So for anybody, you know, we just like to, you know, fill you in in case you just someone who doesn't, you know, be on social media or watch the news. Kevin Samuels is was a popular YouTuber. Uh, very, you know, kind of clean cut guy. Um, he, you know, died. We don't know for sure yet because, you know, they haven't um, brought back the, I guess, the uh, autopsy reports and everything. But he died in Atlanta, um, Georgia, in an Atlanta apartment and um, under, you know, just suspicious circumstances. Um, some, you know, of course, are saying it was an accidental death. Uh, probably he died due to a mixture of maybe um, the use of um what they call them, you know, penis enhancement or Viagra and, and say he was an avid, uh, Red Bull drinker, energy drink drinker as well. But, um, he had a young lady that he met, um, I believe the day before or not, but she came over, um, came over to his house and she, they say that he just, he died on top of her. (laughs) Hey, what a way to go out, yeah. What a way to go out. So the young lady, the young lady, you know, as news reports kind of came out, more details. Um, the young lady was able to, you know, hurry up and call, um, call, I guess, concierge or the receptionist downstairs. Then she called nine one one, um, you know, so that the police and the EMS could come out to help. She did try to revive him as well. They say she is a nurse um, also. So she tried to save um, Kevin Samuels, um, but unfortunately um, he didn't he didn't make it. Um, like I said, Kevin Samuels, from what I can understand, I he started off like years ago. He started diving into the YouTube space, making videos. And I was looking at some of his older videos and he, you know, those videos, he talked about like business oriented stuff, like business etiquette, um, how to, you know, how, to, how should men dress properly when say going to job interviews and things of that nature, you know, the couple of videos that I've seen, but then as his popularity grew, of course, his conversation and topics he would discuss kind of grew. He talked about, like I said, he was talking about sort of like men, men, um, centered topics at first, and then it grew into relationships. And then that kind of grew into, um, eventually, you know, women and men relationships. And then that kind of grew into, 
specifically kind of pointing out things that black women did um, that for the beta male or the alpha male that can, you know, come off as being things that would be detrimental to the black woman when it comes to the black man. Um, he would say things such as like women over 30, you know, he'll talk about women over 30. Um, he'll talk about women that was healthy, basically saying, you know, how could we want or expect to um, get in a relationship with a quote unquote high value man. But yet, you know, we may be over 30 or we may be a little on the healthy side. Um, but to find out that he died while, in the process of having sexual relations with what seems to be either a Hawaiian or maybe um, a woman of Hispanic descent. Um, and she was thick from the photos that I seen. She wasn't like no little small skinny petite woman. It's, it's very contradictory to, you know, things that he, he himself preached. And so this got basically, after his death, there was a lot, I mean, it was so many people that was really, really like, hey, you know, somewhat celebrating his death. I don't want to be that person. I'm not celebrating his death, but I definitely wanted to just point out the hypocrisy. Um, I Like I said, I because of those statements um, he would make about women, I just felt like for him to have such a large following, um, he was doing a disservice, um, of course, to, you know, not only to our black community, community, but to the, the, to the, um, to the black families in the black, you know, male and female relationships. He could have used his, his platform to just do so much greater things, you know, to be a little bit more positive, not pacify us as black women. You know, don't tell us what you think we want to hear. No, tell us the hard truths. But at the same time, there has to be, I would think it was, it should have been some, some balance. Now, most recently, I would say within the last, I'll say the last year or so, just different video clips that I would see of him. I start seeing him being a, a lot less, you know, um, <clears throat> projecting this, this disdain for, you know, a certain group of women. Um, I saw, start seeing him doing that less and less. And, and it looks like he was trying to, to, to begin flipping his or switch his content up to be a little bit more positive. Hello. Oh, child. I done hit the mic and it went out. But anyway, um, it looks like it's still recording, so we should be still good. But anyway, but yeah, that's how I feel. So, you know, there were a lot of people celebrating his death um, that just was, you know, against against the things that he preached about. And, um, yeah, but it was a lot of people, too, who was, of course, it was a lot of men that was supporting him and, like, you know, trying to stand up for him and, the, you know, T.I., <laughs> T.I., who's a who's a misogynist, yeah, well. who's a misogynist, his damn self, you know, trying to put up a post to kind of be, you know, oh, my God. Ugh. I, I, I hate that T.I. <laughs> T. T. has become this, but it ain't about T.I. But he anyway. He nothing. He always is. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, it was all about his music, but now it's just like, uh, once you really get into somebody's personality, it's a big turnoff. But, yeah, so, you know, one of my questions was that, you know, Kevin Samuels and, and the things that he would say, you know, did he truly hurt or did he help the black community? Um, you know, how did you feel about Kevin Samuels? Or how did you feel when you first he heard about his uh, passing away? Uh, I was sad for his family, but he was always entertaining to me. You know, it was just funny. He was, he was a character to me. Mm -hmm. You know, the hard truth, the hard truth. That's what he was giving out to some of these women. I don't agree with all the stuff he said, but some of it, some of it, just the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, do you um, think that he? Do Do you think that he 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 talked about or gave out hard truths to men as well? Like, do you think it was a balance in that? I don't think it was. I think he was just talking to the ladies. Exactly. And that's where the problem, I think, comes into it. Like, I think that 
that society or the people who knew about Kevin Samuels and the people who was quote unquote celebrating his death, I think it would have been a lot more, um, you know, a lot less celebrating if he kept a balanced level of the hard truth. Like it just, like I said, for about, I think that once his audience grew and a lot of his audience started becoming like black women, you know, or like I said, these alpha male types, um, he just, he kept bashing. It, it just seemed like he was bashing women all the time, all the time. And, you know, it was some bashing, but some of that stuff was real that he was saying, especially these women that's, you know, y'all women. Tread lightly. I'm just going to tell you how it feels. <laughs> I'm tread, tread. tread lightly. Okay, go ahead. You, go ahead. It's women out here with these standards. They want standards, but you know what I'm saying? They want a man to have a standard, but what what's their standard? You know what I'm saying? And he would always address stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That women with their standards, they want this, they want that, but but they got this and they got, you know what I'm saying? That's what I used to do. Some of it was, and right. some of, you know, I ain't going to necessarily be all the way 100% what he said. You know, mm -hmm. he was a funny guy. And I yeah. think a lot of times he was trying to be, funny. he was trying to be funny. You know, and yeah, then, I think it just came it off the wrong way, though. I just and think. then you know how people be once they get their audience and and something starting to go good for them, they just run with it. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. So that's the reason why I think he bought all the way into it because it was it was it was working. It was, it was, working. It was working. working. Yeah, basically, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, so I, he had I, to keep it going. Right. Well. Kevin Samuels, you know, some people, you know, well, on the other hand of that, it's like, should we care that he's gone? You know, that was another kind of thing that was happening on social media. Or did he get his karma? Vivica Fox feel as though she, oh, yeah, she <laughs> Vivica off. Fox That's said he exactly. got his <laughs> karma. Man, uh, I mean, we all, but should I mean, we care though that person. much that he passed away? He's just a regular person. Right. I mean, everybody, people pass away every day. Exactly. We ain't going to care more about him than we did the next person. He ain't did nothing for us. Now he just talk shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he ain't did nothing. Right. That I know of. Yeah. And if he did, tell me. Yeah, he just oh, definitely met, met his <laughs> untimely demise. You know, I guess, I guess you know, um, Oshira... Uh, people who who's into like spirituality and different um you know historic uh parts of spirituality you know Oshira the Oshun goddess Oba the goddess um it, all of those you know all of those uh, ancestral spirits definitely probably uh <laughs> probably came down and said hey you know, Kevin, it might be, it, it just might be your time, bro. You know, and <laughs> you know, sometimes like the universe, I myself does, like I said, I, I like to kind of tap into the universe. I'm not like fully into like crystals and things of that nature, but you know, I'm very, I would, I think that I'm very um, intuitive and I look at things, see how things go. You know, I can kind of look at a situation or uh, you know, just kind of peep the energy from people and decide not to do this or do that or stay away from this or stay away from that. And sometimes, you know, energy is a very, very, very serious thing and, it, and energy is real, you know, just like people who may, you might have, you know, rappers and things of that nature who may just talk about death all the time in the rap songs, you know, a lot of times yeah, when we, come up right. A lot of times the things that we say holds, it, ha it holds a lot of power and the world has a way of just kind of making, you know, that. So it could have just been, you know, Kevin Samuels, you know, time to go. And then when he used to say, when the women got the two and three children, but they talking about, they looking for a man to do this and that. And he said, Hey man, you got all them kids. <laughs> you just hope a man better want you. <laughs> and, and see, that's the type of bullshit that y'all men would sit there and it's the go truth, up though. You can't have no standards and you got two or three kids already, but you trying to peek through some men that you want. 
Yes, you can. What the what the Why number what the, what do the number of kids have to do with you choosing a a quality a quality man? Th- that has nothing to do with that. It's people with three kids. It's people with five kids. It may be people with six and seven kids. That's you still be, a quality you can't, you can't woman. Be picky. You can't be picky when you get. Oh God! Eat, y'all, y'all eat him up in the comments. Don't you know these his words? Just, <laughs> I, I will give you his Facebook. No, no I'm just playing. <laughs> Facebook day, so you can tear him up. <laughs> but I just feel like, and you know, the world revolves around people having their own opinions about things, and that's fine. You know, I'm all for that because I have my. I'm opinionated as well. I just felt like in the recent more recent years there was not a balance and like you said he leaned toward what was making him more popular you know and and kept talking about those topics and made made the topics a lot more harsher which was going to help him go viral you know and things of that nature and the women bought into it because he was having them but they would call in and and be going back and forth with right yeah (laughs) it worked his plan worked his plan worked it definitely worked um, but Kevin Samuels, you know, you guys out there, you older gentlemen as well, and kind of find out younger gentlemen too who who use, you know, use these uh, these little um, Viagra type of pills and Rhino pills from the gas station. Y'all have to be careful, you know, definitely careful with that stuff, especially if you you may have some underlying health issues that you're not familiar with. You know, you may not even know what's going on inside your own body. Um, But definitely watch out. Watch out for that. Um, It ain't the first time that we've heard of a man, you know, passing out in the middle of sex, you know, because of some maybe some heart issues and things of that nature. Um, So y'all be careful. When y'all think y'all trying to, you know, tear that thing up in the bedroom. Yeah, trying, it's all for y'all. That's what I be trying to tell you. Well, the man got more pressure than a woman. He got to. He got to be the one to perform. Hey, we brought y'all hey. in. I guess we taking y'all out, child. <laughs> <laughs> I think when he felt that pain, that initial pain, he should have eased up a little bit. <laughs> right because they said he was feeling something the night before he said that you know his chest wasn't feeling right oh he should have went to the doctor then See, he, he should have went already. then mm-hmm. it, it didn't necessarily have to do with no viagra or nothing. it just she was just that's when it did it yeah he probably had like a little having a little heart attack and yeah he should have went on to and over he probably overlooked it and said oh i'm all right it's probably just some you know, a heartburn or, or something. I got the young Kendall coming through the night. <laughs> I need to see her. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But rest in peace um, to Kevin Samuels. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of us may not have agreed to what you said, uh, but the journey you set out on when you decided to be an internet sensation on YouTube, um, your plan it you know it worked. It got a lot of us tuned in, whether we hated you or loved you. Um, your plan did work. I don't know what other positive things he did outside of the YouTube stuff. Hopefully, you know. Hopefully, he did a lot more things. You know, a lot more positive things. That's you know kind of gonna guarantee a spot. You know, in heaven. So, um, yeah. Rest in peace, Kevin. Yes. Okay, so bat ba 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 ba. I wish I had the music. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I need to stop. I need to fix this mic. Um, I wish I had some music to play right now, so I can uh pull out a little liquor, pull out a little liquor for my homeboys. Hey, from the ATL, Young Thug and Gunna, and. Oh. The YSL crew arrested on RICO charges. There was about 56 uh, charges or counts total. And um, they were denied bond. Um, They had their initial thug and gunner. Both were denied bond. Um, Young thug, um, if you didn't hear, also um, had some additional charges thrown 
Adam as well. Um, after the, I guess, when the police had searched his home, um, they found multiple, multiple weapons. They found marijuana, some other things. So those additional charges <sighs> is on them again. Dang. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. How you feel, man? About the Rico Ooh. charges. Man, if they if that's true, man, the boy had it going on over there. Man. Yeah, they had it going uh, on. They had a they had a very strong, I would say, the most serious things from the court documents because I was looking at DJ Academics. He had a video about an hour, two hours long, and he was going through the actual um, indictment. Um, and you know what? The indictment shows you all of the parties um, that um, are on the indictment. It's like twenty eight individuals, and they showed. Um, each count you know what counts um each of the people were being um charged with or accused of at this point and a lot of it was like murder robberies um murder robberies the most serious stuff is yeah the most serious stuff is um ysl being affiliated with uh where one of their crew members killed a cop injured another cop um, and the YFN Lucci vendetta that they have. You know, YFN Lucci is a rapper in Atlanta as well, um, who's currently still in jail. And um, he was hit with, his crew was hit wa- with Rico charges, I believe, also. And um, they were trying to, they had this beef. They have, they, they've had this long going beef um, between Lucci and Young Thug. And um, seems as though Young Thug or. Um, allegedly uh, may have been trying to put out a hit on Lucci, um, not one time, but two times. And, you know, most recent they tried to kill him in jail. He was stabbed. Yeah, them young boys over there in Atlanta. That's y'all Atlanta folks over there. Boy, y'all got organized crime. Organized crime, man. And the DA, um, they had a... Uh, press conference um the state uh, district attorney um i believe her name is fanny or fanny 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 um you know she she dead set she she said she came to the she just came to the city took her position and she is um she's 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 uh, on a rampage um she trying to clean she trying to clean the city up she had a plan um, she had a plan coming into office, and uh, hey, she got the she got the Lucha crew out the streets for now. Now thug, she says she planning on grabbing up some more. So, you know, y'all rap dudes, y'all need to chill out and just make them rap money. Just make the rap money, but you're gonna have to, and it shouldn't be used, but you're gonna have to probably. St- start cleaning up your lyrics too and your music because um in the indictment pe- papers here for young thug and ysl um they had rap lyrics like spelt out in the in the um indictment papers um so they they she's truly trying to utilize things that have been said and that's one of the reasons why um Ghana was picked up because Ghana, Ghana is just an artist. Ghana did not grow up in off Cleveland Avenue. He's not a part of that hood that Young Thug, you know, grew up in. And um, he's just an artist, but, you know, kind of guilty by association. And some of the things that he repped in his music, they're trying to use against him. Um, but, you know, Ghana, Ghana's attorney said, no, y- y'all wrong. The state is wrong for trying to do that because they're just lyrics. But we see that time and time again that, you know, they try to do that. And, you know, in the court system is utilize lyrics against these rappers. So Facebook pages, yeah. <clears throat> Facebook pages, IG. I mean, they even had a – they even had – um. Uh, evidence in the indictment papers where it was some YSL crew members or affiliates um, on social media. They didn't specify whether or not they pulled this from uh, uh, DM out of Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, but they just said communication on social media between this person and that person um, 
one guy basically DM the other stating um they hey man they trying to uh they trying to indict us for their body. <laughs> hmm. Academic said, man, if somebody would have DM some shit like that to me, I would have just immediately immediately blocked that. <laughs> shit, it's too late then. It's in the air. Like block. Like how it you is. just go text that to me? <laughs> dumb motherfucker. Just dumb, man. <laughs> just Don't you ever goddamn call my number no fucking money. Right. Just dumb, man. Oh my God, y'all young guys, y'all be want to be criminals and, and hard and, and street dudes so bad, but y'all just, y'all make the most careless mistakes. Yeah, they do it until, they, until the shit come around and they want to go home, man. Yeah, and they even, <laughs> you um. You want to be a thug till you get your young thug. Right. Yeah, you to... <laughs> and they, it looks like they okay. also have been tapping um young thug's phone, like within the last year or two also so they they done picked up they got some you know audio recordings of conversations for him right no this is state this is rico yeah but with these guns yeah but with the guns that they found he had like a silencer and something else that is an automatic federal charge like you can't you know installed out installed out (laughs) Um, like the silencer. I don't know if it's sawed off shotgun. Yeah, you ain't supposed to have no sawed off. Where Alabama? Shit, nowhere. Oh, I would think a sawed off shotgun is kind of like normal because you have you know people who go out there and hunt, do bird hunting and deer hunting. Um, uh, but they got rifles. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm, okay. But um, it ain't you know it ain't looking too good. But thug the you know. I've always been a fan. I've been a fan of Ghana as well. I just, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm upset that, you know, you, you were very successful in this music game and everything. Um, Ghana was very successful. It, it's always another way to just get yourself out of that lifestyle. Men have to learn to get the men or women. That's part of street part of street gangs need to learn how to if you get into a position where you can make it out get your butt out sometimes you can't keep being you can't be cool with everybody you can't keep being cool with the people you grew up with not at all times especially not if they still doing dirt you doing dirt you know mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's just not a good situation um Wack 100 and Dre, well, excuse me, Jay Prince um, was in a heated exchange over, uh, recently over um, a video interview of um, Larry Hoover. Um, the video was supposed to assist Hoover, who's been in prison for a very, very long time. Um, it's supposed to hopefully would have helped um, maybe get him released from prison. Also, um, the video was going to be part of maybe like a movie or a documentary in regards to his life. Um, but WAC 100 supposedly was holding on to the video. Um, not holding on, but just making it difficult um, for Jay Prince, who was out of Houston, kind of like the godfather. Um, in order to cash in, um, basically on the highest bidder, meaning TV production crews, film, um, film production companies who may have wanted to, you know, purchase the rights, um, of Larry Hoover's life story. So you was tuning in. What you thought about that situation? Well, there's so many terms to that story because. Well, Wax said was like when this when all that took place, Jay Prince wasn't even in the in the movement yet, you know. Mm-hmm. And then he said, this lady who actually did the interview, she went to the president and all these different places mm-hmm. just to get access to go into the federal prison, you know. And which and what Wax saying is. <clears throat> Hoover had to sign off on this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? 
Right. And and then they also said if the Hoover family or anybody else owned the footage, because this is not something that just recently happened. This that footage been that footage old. They said that they would have been had it if they owned it. Right. The lady that lady actually owned the footage. Yeah, because she was yeah, she's the one, it's her property, basically. Right. And Jay Prince and them trying to buy the footage. They want to buy the footage. Mm-hmm. Man, but they don't want to get laid in them like $20,000 for it. They trying to, you know what I'm saying? Short change. They trying to, yeah, short change or low But ball. she know that yes. if they get that footage, they finna make a, like a little story about it. You know, it's worth more than that. So right. she ain't willing to do it. And Wack was already on her team. So he say. No, so the lady say too, because I seen the interview where they was talking to the lady. But you she know, said, whack you, who you with me? But you know that yeah. they they probably ain't true. That video recording is old. That ain't nothing recent, like you said. All right. Whack ain't know that lady from the beginning. But Jay Prince just trying to pull a move, man. So you he think Jay Prince is at fault here? I mean, it, the, what the story that he telling mm-hmm. ain't the truth. Mm-hmm. He's saying that the story that can, that the dude got some um, is some on the story that can get Larry Hoover free. Mm-hmm. That's not true. The, the, the story, the footage is about his life. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing on his life about his life that can free him. Mm-hmm. They want that footage, man, because they know they can make some money off of it. All of them want the footage for the same thing. The so do you said, think? Just want some men on it. So do you think that Jay Prince has been on this campaign for the past year or two, trying to free Larry Hoover campaign? He remember he had the big concert and everything with Drake and Kanye and them. Do you think he's been like? Why would he do all of that? Just he just trying to flex his muscle mm-hmm. and and whack like fuck you, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't scared of your motherfucking ass. And all the people are like, oh, man, I don't think he should have said that. He like a black godfather and this and that. Like, like man, fuck right. that nigga. You know what I'm saying? He wrong on this one. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Don't make him stand on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, damn, whether you want to stand or not. So. Yeah, I saw I where he had one. shared the um the text messages and stuff. Oh, yeah, he put the text message where Hoover said, what's up with the lady price? You know what I'm saying? He tried to act like, Whack didn't ain't got nothing to do with the lady. Like he didn't. Well, he acting like Whack ain't in the lady. Whack Whack basically has started being her basically her representative. Right. He was working on behalf of the lady recently. I don't think I don't think Whack has history with this lady. I just think that Whack. I th- I think Whack probably should not have gotten into it. It should have been just that lady and Jay Prince and Larry Hoover. That's my problem with whack. As we see with all these six nine situations, all these situations that be <laughs> happening in hip hop, whack always find a way to insert himself. He keep inserting himself, you know, trying to base basically ex- maybe extort to some extent, you know, trying to get some money out of a situation. He ain't have shit to do with this, but he inserted himself probably because I don't know where the lady from, but clearly he inserted himself probably done. You know, finessed her, talked some game, and her ear was like, "Man, they trying to get this video from you. You better make sure you know. You need mm-hmm. to get money. You, you, or oh, this your content. You own the rights to this. Exactly. You know? Yep, because she had it for so long, so she got to be the owner. It ain't the Prince family. Jay Prince trying to act like the Prince family own the stuff. Yeah, which they don't. They don't. Yeah, the, the lady own it. Now, do you think it was a situation where, because, you know, it was some confusion with the Big Meech thing and 50, you know, having the rights, but it ended up being some it's some other person that had the rights to Big Meech story. Larry Hoover is still alive. All right. So do you think that Jay Prince and Larry may have had some, some shit going on, some type of business contract going on you can't never tell with that stuff there Mm -hmm. you don't know if larry told jay to try to get it you know what i'm saying right because jay trying to act like he he trying to do it for the wife Mm -hmm. and wax said he talked to the wife 
<laughs> uh, uh, you don't know who to believe in these stories, though. But yeah, but Prince Prince got some stuff on there. He ain't telling the whole fact about car. Uh, Wack put receipts, so he put the text messages on mm-hmm. on live. You know what I'm saying? So right, he got some receipts. Mm. So, so receipts, got them just like a payment, baby. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Jay Prince, I don't know. And Jay Prince need to stay out of that type of stuff. He just yeah, kind of, he, him and he Wack trying to keep, right, they both so old. <laughs> they need and to sit down, come. enjoy their families and their grandkids. Like, <laughs> just be too yeah, much. Yeah, they trying to get in like, all the food business. Like, man, these young folks don't respect the old people no more. So, right. You get yourself killed now. They fuck with these. I don't even know how old Wack is, but. I'm just telling you, these little young niggas will, will wipe Jay Prince ass off the map and won't think twice. Right. If it came down to it. Whack, yeah, <laughs> it Whack is probably even, around our age, I would think. I'm just saying, and they won't even know they did who they killed. Right. They killed the older niggas around here. Mm-hmm. Like, an older nigga my age wouldn't even fuck with him. Uh, they know it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but a young nigga, shit. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't care. Like right. <laughs> right. That shit you did with thirty years ago, nigga. Right. What you doing now? Right. Just like a old, a old, uh, high school, like a high school football star athlete, still talking about. Right. <laughs> still talking still about. Still talking about what they did. Right. <laughs> Fifty years old. <laughs> still think like a nigga supposed to respect you off that shit, man. Fuck. Right. <laughs> I recently got into it with a nigga on some shit like that. Like, man, that shit was so long ago. What you talking about, man? Well, fuck you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I don't be liking that back in the day talk either. It be all right sometime when you, you know, with your friends and you like, man, remember when we did it? We, we did that. But outside but it's, of that. It's, but it's, the, it's the person who, and that's all they got to talk about. Yeah, now, yeah, that's what it is. You, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if that's all you got to talk about, is what you did? Right. Nah, I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Fuck you. Me either. I'll be that's the shit that bothered me. <laughs> me too. But anyway, so we're going to wrap up this episode, man. You know, we talked about Kevin Samuels, Young Thug, Gunner. Y'all keep y'all head up. Pray for everything work out right for you guys. Um, yeah, and hope that it's the other people that's doing the same thing see what they doing and change what they doing. Correct, because at this point, I'm sure, especially here in Atlanta, the DA they already they already been working they set, and these other crews that's on their list. Hey, it's it's probably it's probably too late. It, yeah, it's too it's probably too late at this point for them to try to clean up their act. <clears throat> so you guys better disappear. Shoot, they better <laughs> go, they go stay in what find them somewhere to live in Belize or Aruba. Skip town because they damn sure coming. But anyway, let's get out of here, man. All right. Well, peace to the Middle East and y'all have a blessing lovely week yes sir um don't forget you guys subscribe to our channel on all strength streaming 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 Ooh, child I got my west side talking streaming platforms um that's straightforward with miss b um we're on social media as well str8 fwd msb um follow us you know do- definitely subscribe to our channels subscribe to our youtube channel as well And um, until next week, peace.